Let's pray this morning and uh, let's do it a little differently. Anybody who's led, come stand with me right here at the steps. Let's pray together and be together as we pray. This is, there's not a better time to be in the house of the Lord than right now. There's not a more crucial time for you to be under the, the auspices of the Holy Spirit than right now. Your future you is going to be grateful to the present you for paying the price to stand in the house of God, to be in the house of God, because uh, these moments will be irreplaceable in the coming time. Hey, it's good to see you, man. I'm happy to see you. Yes, sir. I want to pray about these following things, and that's why I wanted you here so I could see you and you can see me, because the Holy Spirit gave these to me this morning for you. We want to pray for these things. Number one, scratching out all fear. Like, um, I, the best picture I can give you is the, uh, the lottery scratch off where there's a prize underneath, but there's a coat, there's a coating over top of it. And you got to scratch that off in order to see what's revealed underneath. Well, that film on top is fear and you cannot even see what God wants for you and wants to do because it's covered. So he says, teach them and tell them to scratch, scratch off fear. You scratch it off and <laughs> blow it off, then you can see what your prize is. And then he said this, to talk to you and, and to encourage you for us to pray about how we deal with pressure. Because pressure, when not dealt with properly, becomes stress. Stress, when not handled properly, becomes anxiety. And anxiety turns into fear. And so what's happening is the enemy is talking us into stress, but, but he's not bringing stress. He just brings pressure, knowing pressure is just a seed. And when it's allowed to grow, it, the fruit of it is going to be that stress and that uh, emotional stress and anxiety. So we want to pray about that. We're going to pray failure off of us today. No matter what we're dealing with, no matter what, no matter what it is, failure is not in our vocabulary. Then we're going to pray to release courage. Amen. We want to pray to release confidence. And, um, and pray for strength in temptation. I just pray today for the saints of God that in the middle of temptation, will be strong. Yes. Not just temptation to sin, but temptation to sickness, temptation to poverty, temptation to lack and fear. Any temptation that is not, anything not drawing us into God, we're going to overcome that temptation. Yes. We have overcome that temptation. And then this may be the most important one I want to pray for. And 1 Corinthians 10, 6 says, being ready, having a readiness to revenge all disobedience. In other words, the Lord talked to me this morning about praying with you, oh Jesus, about going back over your life, repenting for all wasted moments. Now you know we done wasted some time. We've wasted his time. We've wasted his blood. Just go back over your life. You, you know, you know things, things we got into, things we were doing, things we were saying, things we were believing, things we were acting out, and it, it, and it was wasting time. But 1 Corinthians 10, 6 says, we, there's such a thing as revenging. In other words, reclaiming all of those moments. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Before you shout. Before you shout. All the time I have wasted before God, yeah. he showed me for us to go back into those moments, wow. repent, okay. and those moments we gave to something else, take those moments back and say, Lord, I give you all those moments back to you right now. Yeah. 
Do that with me. I'm getting all those moments. I wasted them. I fumbled them away. I was doing something, saying something, living something I was not supposed to be. I repent. And now I give all those, I reclaim those moments and I give them all back to you. Oh man. Oh man. Oh man. So now the Lord says, I'm going to treat your life just as if in all those moments where you were sinning or failing or falling, I'm going to act like you were praying in tongues when you did that. I'm going to act like you were studying the Word. I'm, I'm, you, you just gave it back to me. That's what I would have you to do. So all those moments, those ugly moments, those failing moments, those sinful moments, whoosh, wiped away. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. And so, and lastly, we'll pray this. All agreements and covenant with darkness, with spirits of darkness, with the powers of darkness, agreements we have made, agreements our ancestors have made with pornography and drugs and alcohol, adultery, any, any covenant that has been functioning in our family that's not from God, we break his power today. We break agreement with all darkness. Can we pray about these things? You want to shout before or after we pray? What, what, what? Bo, we'll go ahead and shout first. So let's pray. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus today that we in this solemn assembly do scratch out all fear. Thank you for the name of Jesus that gives us the, the ability to scratch out and eliminate all fear. We know you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And we release and receive that in this place today. Holy Spirit, thank you for teaching us how to handle pressure. As soon as it hits, to recognize that's pressure. And teach us to turn over to you, to cast all our care upon you because you care for us. We repent for the many years where we have cast that care on ourselves and have carried the care. Self-care is what the world calls it. We repent of self-care. It's not our job to care for ourselves. It's your job, Lord Jesus. And so we ask you to teach us to deal with pressure by handing everything over to you. Thank you for that. And so therefore we reject anxiety and fear that comes from pressure and stress. Hallelujah. Give us joy unspeakable and full of glory. No matter what we see and what we feel, let us stay joyful. Let us stay expectant. Let us stay looking for our redemption because it draws nigh. I rebuke and bind in the house failure, financial failure, family failure, faith failure. And I release the spirit of courage. Thank you for giving us courage. Thank you, Lord, for giving us confidence, releasing confidence in who you are. Let our confidence be in you, not in man. And then give us, Lord, strength. Give these people, give the children of God strength in the middle of temptation. We know temptation is coming. It's impossible except for temptation to come. But we're not going to fall to it. You didn't fall, Jesus, and so we don't have to fall. And then lastly, Lord, give us the spirit of revenge against all disobedience ever in our life. The time we failed, the time we sinned, the time we rebelled, the time we were disobedient, we, 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 we number one, we, we repent for all those moments. Now we reclaim those moments. We gave them to someone else. We gave those moments to something else. Now we give them back to you. 
And now, Lord, allow you to transfer those moments back over into the ledger, the side of our life that brings life and that brings holiness. We revenge all moments of disobedience. And all those moments are now moments to our benefit and not to our detriment. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to break all agreement, to break all agreements with evil spirits, with evil covenants that we have made, we have fallen into agreement with, or that our ancestors have made. We break, we break it all and declare we are free from alcohol, from weed, the spirit of weed. I, 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 I see you, you little skinny thing with your little knobby knees, your devilish spirit, we cast you out. You have no right to infiltrate and control a believer's life. The name of alcohol too, in the name of Jesus. Cussing, profanity as well, in the name of Jesus. All broken. We break all covenant with evil spirits. And off of our children, off of our offspring, off of our children and grandchildren. No more skip to Malou, my darling, skipping this generation so you can hit that one. No, all generations are clean. All generations are secure. All generations are safe. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. All right, you want to shout one more time then? All right, sing it. Sing it with them. Come on. I worship and adore. Hallelujah. All right, before you go back to your seats, I just want to remind you what we just did. Among, amongst all we did was reclaim every idle moment, every idle word, every wasted second, every moment we could have been worshiping the Lord, singing to the Lord, singing in tongues, praying in tongues, reading the Word. Every moment that we were not doing that, he says, I'm willing to forgive you of that. Repent of it, reclaim those moments, and then return them to me. I'll help you redeem the time, the days that the enemy stole, the canker worm and the caterpillar, all the days that were lost. Let's, 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 let's turn those days into righteous days. 
Somebody that lived many years in sin ought to be happy right there. I mean, you, you just got a, a, a whole swath of years reclaimed and given back to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, go, I mean, call the roll. That old raggedy boyfriend from a long time ago, you wasted time on the phone. You could have been in the Word. Just repent. Say, Lord, I wasted time there. Now I'm giving that time back to you. I repent and I give that time back to you. He says, all right, I, I'm going to act like you were doing what you're supposed to be doing. Why? Why, Father? Because the harvest I want to bring to your life, I need to get as much seed in the ground as possible. So I'm going to count your days as righteousness. I'm going to just act like you were serving me the whole time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, well, love one another as you get back to your seat, all right? Prophetic flow of God foretells. In other words, it speaks of the future. It, it points to the future. It talks about or speaks towards the future. The apostolic is a ruling anointing, a ruling factor. It rules and governs today. So you have the prophetic telling you what is to come, John 16, 13, and you have uh, the apostolic presently ruling in the present. And so the Lord is dealing with your present and your future. To your heavenly father, your past has no, bears no weight on what he's doing in your life. That's why you have the apostolic dealing with the present, the prophetic dealing with the future. He like, I don't even, the, the blood took care of the past. And so it, 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 it it is vitally important that you carry uh, in your daily life a, uh, an apostolic seal that, that you are under the government, the governing of God. You're under God's government. And a prophetic lance, like a, uh, like a thermal lance, something that you could poke into something and it's like a laser that, that, that will make a hole. It, it will d disrupt or tear away things. Those two being apostolic, not apologetic, apostolic, and prophetic, not pathetic, but prophetic, is going to help your life in a great way. Repentance is important. Being a person of repentance and quick to repent. That's 1 John 1, 9. And then worship. Being a worshiper. Now John 4, 24 says God is actually looking for worshipers. It doesn't say he just desires a worship. That's who he's looking for. And so you're going to meet his needs and make his dreams come to pass. That when he gets to you, he doesn't have to look for another worshiper because he found you. And then the third of these big three is warfare. Understanding the basis of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, that there is a war already. And they're talking about World War III. The, 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 the world war free has been going on since Genesis 3.15. Lucifer against God. The seed of Lucifer, the seed of the devil versus the seed of God. The seed of, of the woman. And so you have those that you have to account for. 
you can be seated. I want to deal with you with the help of the Holy Spirit about how to bring your life up to and into the supernatural. How to bring your life up to and into the supernatural. Now, you already are born again. You already are born again. That's supernatural in and of itself. You believe, if you're born again, that a virgin who'd never been with a man got pregnant and had a baby. You believe that. You believe that if you're saved, that he lived for 33 years and was tempted but never sinned. That had to be supernatural. We, most of us can't go a day. <laughs> without looking at somebody cross-eyed, thinking something of somebody, saying something under our breath. See, just because you didn't say it out loud does not mean you didn't say it. All right? So it sins, all sin right there. And so Jesus went 33 years, tempted like we are, but yet without sin one time. Then he died on the cross. Suffered to pay for our sin, and then God raised him from the dead. That's supernatural. So what we have to eliminate the enemy from doing is getting us to believe in a supernatural faith, but not have any supernatural results. Then when you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, he came by the the Holy Spirit to live on the inside, that's supernatural. Then some of you had the nerve to get filled with the Holy Ghost and speak in unknown tongues, that's supernatural. But then somehow when we get to our job or we get to our family or we get to our health, all of a sudden supernatural is out of reach. Well, we're going to bring it back in reach. All right? So bringing your life up to and then into the supernatural, not in name only, but actually, actually doing it. I want to read some other things to you. Because of uh, where we are right now in the world, globalism, uh, you have things like population control, depopulation, uh, cri turning crisis into control. Who knows what is election year? They know it's going to be something, some shenanigans going on this year. Artificial intelligence rather than actual inspiration from God. All of these substitutes. Dystopia. Um, that's kind of a cold word for uh, the World Economic Forum, the World Health Organization, the United Nations, all these one world unified governmental uh, alphabet agencies uh, want to create a dystopia where you have the elite and then the exploited. But they left out the elect and, and how we're not going to be subject to that. All these things are out in front of us for this year. Globalism, the dystopia. What about this one? The apocalypse. The end of man, the, 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 the end of humanity could be soon. And then the eschaton, eschatology, the uh, final event on God's divine calendar. The next event is the rapture, but there's some things after that. The marriage supper of the lamb, you ain't saying nothing. Hmm? The, the judgment seat of Christ, glory to God, we know how to handle that. Then you have uh, uh, the battle of Armageddon, then you have the, the second coming of the Lord, you, uh, you, you have a whole lot coming up. And all that's out there, let me tell you what to do. Number one, here's what needs to be in your life, repent. Be a person who repents quickly because that keep your eyes on God. Number two, turn from sin. At least known sin. 
I hate so-and-so. No, you know that's a sin to say that. I, I know you know that. Don't let it slip out of your mouth. Even my young granddaughter, Jewel, would, would get me. Don't say hate, Papa. Like I might say, man, I hate this cold weather. He said, mm, don't say hate, Papa. We don't hate anything. Number three, live fully for Christ. Make up your mind to, that every day is going to be a day to really live fully for Christ. And then number four is to bless the Lord all the time. Bless the Lord at all time. You know, that was David. Bless the Lord, O oh, oh my soul. And then he said, I will bless the Lord at all times for his praise. It's going to always be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all. Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. And when you find me, his praise is going to be in my mouth. Things might not be what I want them to do. I might not have what I want. I might not have what I'm believing for. I might not see what I've been standing for, but I'm going to bless the Lord at all times, and his praise is going to be in my mouth. Look at somebody and say, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. And his praise, when you find me, his praise is going to be in my mouth. The first thing I'm going to mention, not the cowboys. It's not going to be the Buckeyes. The first thing I want to talk about is going to be, I want to bless the Lord. His praise is in my mouth. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's what I'm talking about. Can you see me? Or are you still looking? All right. So getting your life up to and into the supernatural. One important thing to realize is it's already there. So I'm not talking about a bunch of works for you to get into. Your life already has this capacity. Let's find it and trace it through and, and make sure about it in Jesus' name. Turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Now, because the way you and I are beginning to walk, the revelation, things will begin transpiring. Here's the word I hear for you, quickly, quickly. Quickly. When things are in line, quickly. And it's not as difficult or as far away as it seems. Do I have any engineers or anybody in engineering or IT? Uh, what, what is the thing called? Occam's razor? Anybody ever? You, no, I see nobody. <laughs> Occam's razor, like in technology or, or really anything, the easiest answer is the most likely answer. And so we, when we're solving things, we tend to go all the way to the most complicated and waste time doing the most complicated thing when the simplest adjustment was going to fix it. Well, this, this is definitely true in the supernatural. Because Jesus already is taking care of what it is. So, so we out here, I better call somebody. Let me call the doctor. Let me call the lawyer. No, oh, I got a scheme. I, oh, I, I, oh, I got an idea how to do this. And the Lord said, it's already done. It's not Occam's razor. It's Jesus' razor. The simplest response is what brings the most powerful result. Oh, come on, man, y'all. Y'all, you, you want me to work overtime today? The, let, me, let me say it again. The simplest response brings the most overwhelming result. Praise. Worship. Go ahead and do your things in the natural you need to do, but take care of what you can take care of in the spirit realm. Mostly, what you're doing does take some things in the natural, but take care of the supernatural first. Because you take care of the supernatural first, it might not take very much natural at all. The only natural part might be you just showing up. 
The only natural part might be you just waking up and saying, glory to God. That's all he needs you to do in the natural. Uh, in the spirit realm, you, things are taken care of. I'm talking about solutions to things that have been hanging around for 13, 19, 26, and 33 years. All of a sudden, easily being disarmed and dispatched. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Horrible, horrible situation. The Lord can fix it. Hopeless situation. The Lord can fix it. Horrendous situation. But the Lord can fix it. And the key to the Lord fixing it is you knowing it's already fixed. Jesus razor. The cross is the razor. The cross is the switchblade. The cross, let, let me say it this way. The cross is the shank that you're about to shift into the devil's gut. Stick it in, turn it around, and find out what's going on in there. Was that visual enough for you? You might say, Dr. Forbes is so deep. I need to see. I need to see what he's saying. Is that deep enough? We're going to shiv the devil into his gut with the cross. <laughs> Turn it and grind it till he feels it. Oh, my God. I, I'm... I'm, I'm I'm preaching better than y'all working with me, but it's okay. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Now, you've heard apostle talk about that. Nobody can just call himself to be an apostle. And you got to have more than seven members to happen to be an apostle. And your biggest miracle can't be a front row parking space when you go to Easton. That, that, that's not a really a miracle. That's just a blessing. An apostle of Jesus by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be to you, my goodness, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So God, God should be blessed. Can you do that? Lord, God bless Father. you right now. He said, blessed be God. So, all right, we bless you. Bless you, Father. We bless you, God. With my hands and my heart and my mouth, I, I bless you right now. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? He had half, 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 has already happened. He has already, now we blessed him, but now he has blessed me already with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, you think of the word spiritual, you got to think of the word supernatural. And when you think of the word heavenly, you got to think about supernatural. So, He has blessed me. He has blessed you with all supernatural blessings in supernatural places. Already has taken place. See, we usually fight what we're fighting from, you know, let's say you live on, uh, uh, let's see, what's the street you can name? Don't name your actual street. Yes, let's, let's say you live on Kingfisher, 300, 390 Kingfisher Drive. We usually fight our battles from, from that address. We're at that address, and we're, we, we, are, we, we are fighting from that address point. What I need you to do is be inside 390 Kingfisher Drive, but you're fighting from somewhere else. 
You're fighting from a heavenly place. Look at somebody saying, I'm in a good place right now. I'm in a good place. A heavenly place. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. And look at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, thank God for that. For his great love wherewith he loved us. My goodness, nobody else loves you, you know the Lord does. Hmm? Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with Christ. See, verse chapter 1, verse 3, we were in Christ. Now we're with Christ. By grace are you saved. And, now, and, 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 oh, 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 and, and look, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So there, there it is. I, I'm sitting in heavenly. Now, why, why, why would receiving spiritual blessings be difficult if I'm seated in the place where those blessings are located? So I'm not sitting at 390 Kingfisher Drive. That's why I physically am standing, but simultaneously in the spirit, I'm in a supernatural place. All right, let's go a little further. I want to make sure you're getting all of this. Your position is over your predicament. Your status is the boss of your situation. Your potential is looming over your problem. I'm not saying you don't have a problem. I'm not saying there's not a situation. I'm not saying you don't have a predicament. I'm not saying you don't have a situation to deal with. But where you are, and more importantly, who you are, is more important. All right. First Timothy chapter three. Is this talking to you at all? Yes, I mean, if, if you don't have any long standing situation, then congratulations. You just got born yesterday. But if you've been here any amount of time, we are not even, or, or let me put it this way. We are barely, say barely. barely. We are barely aware of the strategy and the shenanigans the enemy has deployed against us. It has been, it has been working. And it takes you to get saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, planted in an apostolic, prophetic mindset, for the light to come on just to begin your resurgence out of the hole he built for you. But you, but, but, uh, but, but, but you free though. I said, I said, I, 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 I said, I feel like foghorn leghorn. I said, I said, I said, I said, boy, I said, I said, but you free. Even when you sit there with handcuffs and stocks on your ankles, you still free. You're not free because you look free. You're free because he made you free. And you just got to understand. You got to have enough spiritual, uh, oh, here's a word my mom used to use, enough gumption. You know what gumption is? What, what is gumption? Huh? Uh-uh. Enough, uh, enough oomph. Hallelujah. You, uh, 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 when, when you can smell yourself. But what you smell is anointing, not funk. What you smell is the blood. What you're smelling, I smell angels. I smell angels around me. This is going to be such a glorious experience for you. As I've said before, I almost wish I was you. But I've got so much lined up for me, I think I'm going to stick with my lineup. 
Hallelujah. That's, yes, 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 I'll say that. Here's, here's what I hear the Lord saying. You know, when us men, you know, the main thing with our hair, you got to have a line. Right? You got to have, except, except for Braxton. <laughs> All right? You got to have a line. The Lord is going to line up your life this year. He's going to line, he's going to line, he's going to give you a clean line. It's, it's been kind of frayed, but it, it's, it's going to be a clean, a clean line. Or you ladies, y'all have split ends. The Lord said, I'm cutting off all the split ends on your life. Just a clean cut. All right, 1 Peter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 21. The like figure we're into, even baptism, doth also now save us. Not putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Who is gone into heaven? Oh, my God. He was down here, but he's gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God. Angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. I'll tell you again, for the fourth week in a row, there is no power on earth that is not subject unto him. If you are dealing with racism, I doubt it's systemic. I doubt it's systematic. It may be personal. It may be an individual situation. I don't care what level it is. Get your tail over here into verse 22. Because every spirit is subject unto him. You're in an abusive relationship. Get yourself into verse 22. Because the only thing that is causing you to be abused in this relationship is an evil spirit of violence, and that spirit of violence is subject unto him. Dealing with something a long time in your body, that's just a spirit of infirmity. That spirit of infirmity is subject unto him. Why? Because he's sitting on the right hand of God in heaven in these heavenly places. The devil, the, look, 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 Lucifer himself can't wrestle with, with Jesus. Satan can wrestle with you and I. Demons can wrestle with you and I. They cannot, there is no wrestling with Jesus. Jesus already whipped their tail and made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it at the cross. At the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Why? Because every spirit I run into is subject unto him. The spirit of poverty is subject unto him. The spirit of suicide is subject unto him. The spirit of weed is subject unto him. The spirit of alcoholism is subject unto him. The spirit of suicide is subject unto him. The spirit, I'm calling the role, the spirit of depression is subject unto him. Sit down. That's what you need to say to these evil spirits. Your time to talk is over. Sit your tail down. Jesus is here. Well, I thought you said he's sitting on the right hand of God. He is. But that's, he's in my heart. So now he's, he, he, he's wherever we are. Who has gone into heaven? Now here's what I heard. The same demon spirits that he spoke to when he was here on earth 2,000 years ago, 
the same evil spirit, the same wind, the same waves, they still recognize his voice. You know why? Because when he spoke to the wind and the waves 2,000 years ago, it was in the spirit. When he dealt with those demons 2,000 years ago, the woman with the issue of blood, the spirit of infirmity, all that, the spirit of death, loose him and let him go. Woman now are loose. All, all, the, all those statements were in the spirit. And so things done in the spirit never, never lose their strength. Now you can, oh my God, you can brush your teeth, but that will wear off. Check yourself the next morning. You can put on deodorant. That might not last even during the day. My grandmother used to talk about, you know, boy, boy, I was, grew up in the summertime down in, in the country. And she said, boy, we got to get you another deodorant. What you use is not holding you. It's not holding you. It's, it's supposed to hold you, but I'm talking, but I'm, oh Jesus, I'm talking about a blood. I'm talking about the blood of Jesus that, that once it is applied, it can, it can hold you. It'll, it, it'll hold you in place. Be seated, be seated. First Peter 3, 22. Let's just try an experiment. Give me the amplified. Just verse 22. Give me the amplified. I just want to try it. I don't even know. I, I, I didn't study it. I just studied it in King James. I'm going to just throw it up here because we may stumble onto something. Just may. And, and he who is now entered into heaven and is at the right hand of God with all angels and authorities and powers made subservience unto him. Whatever you're dealing with is motivated by a spirit. That spirit is subservient to Jesus. Subservient, I like the subject, subservient. Let's just, let's just, let's just, just let's just roll for it. Uh, give, give me the, uh, the uh, message. He went and proclaimed salvation to early generations who ended up in the prison of judgment because they wouldn't listen. Oh, God, run, run, run that back, please. Run that back. <laughs> he went and proclaimed salvation to early generations who ended up in the prison of judgment because they wouldn't listen. You know, even though God waited patiently all the days that Noah built his ship, only a few were saved. Vent eight to be exact. Saved from the water by the water. Oh, my God. Jeez. The waters of baptism do that for us. Not by washing away dirt from your skin, but by presenting you through Jesus' resurrection before God with a clear conscience. Oh, my. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Anybody got some filth in the past? Anybody got anything that would disqualify you in the past? It said that because of Jesus, you come to God with a clear conscience. Woo! Jesus has the last word on everything and everyone. Oh, my God. I'm taking my, I'm taking my jewelry off. I need to hit something. I, 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 Jesus has the last word on everything you're dealing with and everyone you're dealing with. Jesus has the last word. Not the doctor, not the lawyer, not your boss, not your husband, not your wife. Jesus has the last word. If your car is not acting right, Jesus has the last word. Jesus has the last word. Over the Democrats. He has the last word over the Republicans. He has the last word over the independents. He has the last word over uh, politicians. He has the last word over the globalists. He has the last, Jesus has the last word over everything and everyone. So now what you do, you're dealing with something, you just, you take this verse. And you say, I, 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 I ju, ju, uh, 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 judge, ju, uh, J Jesus has the last word with the judge. 
Jesus has the last word with the counselor. Jesus had the last word with, uh, with the doctor. Jesus had the last word over the MRI. Jesus has the last word over the CT scan. Jesus has the last word over the lab test. He has the last word on everything and everyone. I, I, I dare you just to shout on that, just right there. Just, just shout right there. Because you straight up lying if there's not anything nor anyone on your case right now. I know there's someone and something you're dealing with. And whatever that someone and something is, Jesus has the last word. So if the Lord tells you, oh, I'm putting you in the house, and you go and pursue, and because you're not a, a, a manifested money heir yet, then you apply for a mortgage, and then they turn it down, and you say, oh, yeah, but Jesus has the last word. Now, 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 don't use confirmation bias like this is what I want. The Lord has actually given it to you. But if he gives it to you, that's good. Shall he not say it and make it good? Oh, he will. I'm talking about, for somebody in here, I'm talking about a, a, a stubborn problem. Somebody else, I can feel it. A stubborn bondage. Look like it never get right. But Jesus has the last word. Oh, Jesus has the last word on everything and everyone. Oh, glory to God. You know, sometimes you're going through and you pray and it feels like the Lord ain't saying nothing. That, that, that's proof of you right there. Well, I ain't no need to worry because he has the last word. If he ain't said nothing, it ain't done yet. It ain't over. Because when it's over, he'll, he would have had the last word. Last word on everything, and I can't even get off there. Everything and everyone from angels to armies. Where are you at, North Korea? Where, where are you at, Hamas? Where are you at? Jesus has the last word. He's standing right alongside God. And what, oh my God, here it is. And what he says goes. I got to reach in my pocket and just give you this one real quick. Ah! You got to let one of those go. You got to have that loaded in your pocket at all times. You cannot go out in a day and not have one of those in your pocket with you. Just squeeze it anywhere. All right, be seated, be seated. Oh, man, did you see that? Jesus has the last word on everything and everyone. And what he says freaking goes. Hallelujah. 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 I was going to say, I wish you could use this on football games. <laughs> but I used to. I used to. Some of y'all remember, you know, the Cowboys always have a, a Thanksgiving Day game. Because back in 19, uh, I think it was 68 or 69, they wanted to expand, the, you know, the, the, the uh, vi uh, visibility of the NFL. And um, the NFL uh, said they wanted to have a Thanksgiving Day game. So Detroit, Detroit always has a Thanksgiving Day game. Dallas, they were the only two teams that wanted to do it. You got to have vision. 
and make the right decision. So they were the, the first ones. And um, when our church was younger, we used to always, a, a group, core group would always get together on Thanksgiving Day. And um, the, uh, the, the Cowboys would be uh, playing somebody, and, and invariably they're losing. And then at halftime, then we're over at people's house, you know, three, four, five couples, six couples, and families. And then they're like, well, where, where did Pastor go? It's halftime. Where did Pastor go? Pastor's out in the car, praying in tongues <laughs> for the cowboy. And they, 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 I remember specifically, they were, pa- they, they were playing the, the Packers, and the Packers were just whipping them every which way we lose. I was out there praying uh, for the whole halftime in the car. You know, let the engine run, and I sat in there. Because when you're interceding, you can't be around unbelievers. <laughs> I mean, what I'm saying is when you're, when you're really pressing in on something, you need to be surrounded by people who are agreeing with what you're standing for. And I know they're Ram fans. They're, they're, they're still a fan. I can't be praying with those. I can't be. You can't pray with <laughs> infidels. You, you, get, you, 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 you need everybody in agreement. So if I can't get everybody in agreement, I got off by myself. Now, there's a second lesson here. Don't, don't tell everybody what you're dealing with. Don't tell everybody what you're working on. You and the Lord work it out. Find you two or three good faith friends. Let them walk with you. But don't, don't get off of YouTube. Get off of Facebook. Get off of Instagram. Get your business. It's your business and God's business, not everybody else's. You know, I'm believing God for this. I'm struggling here. Now, what you got is you got a whole bunch of unbelievers confessing the opposite of what you're trying to believe for. I'm telling you, if I'm ever fighting for my life, you ain't going to know it until the fight is over. And I'm telling you, oh, this is what happened. I'm telling you how we won. You, you're not going to know. But you know what? Social media is created. It is, it is created for weak, lonely people. And the weakness and loneliness that you're expressing, you could easily take that to the Lord who has the last word on everything and everybody and what he says goes. That's where you ought to be posting your prayers. We're just needy. Let me post this. I'm hungry right now. I'm at Chipotle right now. We don't care where you eating. I'm mad with my mama right now. Me and dad not getting along. Okay, so what? Jesus has the last word. Not Mark Zuckerberg. Jesus has the last word. But when, when our discipline is not there. We're not trained properly. That's why I'm going through these. I'm going through these lessons to get you to shift, get us to shift our behavior to be more kingdom-minded, more body of Christ-minded, more God-centered. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, look, look, go, go through, look all my social media, you never see me complain about nothing. And I got stuff I'm dealing with. Personal, family, church. We have stuff we have to deal with all the time. But I, that, that, I mean, I'm going to put it on there. I tell you what else you're not going to see also. You're not going to see me call out another man of God, sin or no sin. I'm not their Holy Ghost. Go, go back and look at the tapes. It's 20, it, there's 34 years of them. Find out if I ever called out a, 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 a preacher. It's not my job to correct other preachers. It's my job to correct error in the house. My responsibility is this house, not the house in another state. That's God's responsibility. I'm going to use all my time criticizing other preachers. What if what I heard them say and saw them do, what if they've repented? Now, I'm, I'm six months later. I'm like, see, that's, that all oh, you going to die, you going down for that. And they already repented. Now I'm fighting God because they're on God's side. So you don't know. 
Leave people alone. Matt, just get off of social media altogether for a while. Just, just skip it. But you can't because it's an addiction. You know how you know something's an addiction? If you can't stop. Some of you right there, oh, that's crazy. I ain't giving them my phone. That's, that's why. It's a machine, and it don't even work right all the time because it's man-made. But it's okay because Jesus has the last word. I don't need a phone to pray. I don't need a, oh, gee, I don't need a phone to read the word. I don't need a phone to worship. I don't need a phone to prophesy. I don't need a phone to testify. All right, I, 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 oh, geez, I got I to gotta finish. All right, can I give you one more scripture? Turn to uh, Hebrews 12. When Apostle and I and others, Bishop Roberts and others like, like us, are ministering, we're not really ministering for points. I'm not, I'm not ministering this is not a typical sermon. My seminary professors would flunk me right now. They, they were just like, you, you, you didn't open the text. You had no source criticism. You had no context criticism. You had no historical criticism. Uh, the, uh, your, your hermeneutics are off. The whole aspect of homiletics is not, is not in place. But that's under the pastoral model where the goal of church and the goal of ministry is almost to entertain. It's, it, it, it is to cater to you. What needs do you have? What, what, what will make you feel good? Whereas the apostolic model is not geared to that. It's geared to what God is working on. So I'm not trying to carry you. My job is now to train you so that tomorrow you can pull First Peter 3.22, out of your pocket. You can reach in your breast pocket and pull out a, what? See, that's prophetic, the way that happened. So you, now you're equipped with these things so that you're able to win and your, your victory is not dependent on me. My job is to train you so that you're dependent on him. And you can wage victory. You can wage war. You will never, ever, ever forget that Jesus has the last word. I, pro I guarantee you, you will never forget that. Because I, I can feel it. People walking through some mess, walking through some crazy times, but Jesus has the last word. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet... I will fear no evil because Jesus has the last word on everything and not, not to leave it out in everybody. I'm looking at somebody here right now with a straight up 32 year old challenge. 32 years. That thing is trembling in his boots right now. Because it knows. Every knee bows and every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, look, Jesus is a bad boy. I mean, I, you, you understand what I'm saying when I say that? Everybody says yes, sir, to him. But the only thing is you got to come in his spirit. And we can't come in his spirit because we're on YouTube and Snapface and Insta, Insta, Insta chat all day. I mean, it's one thing, golly, if you check it, but the, the, the nature of it, it's like a viper. It strikes and sucks your attention. It's a spirit of witchcraft. I want to Google one thing. 
Look for one item. Look for, I just want to see this one, this one statement somebody said, and then, but, but it's, it's artificial intelligence. It's so smart. If you saw this, you probably want to look at that. Now, next thing I know, I, I, I went to, for one thing. Now, it is like a dog on three hours have gone by. Wasted. I could have been in the spirit during that time. I could have been prophesying during that. Even if half your prophecies were inaccurate, you, 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 you're still not bad if half of them work. I prophesy over the next nine, ten months. The enemies of your life will be exposed for exactly who and what they are, whether they are human, spiritual, spirit or otherwise. I feel Sesame Street right now. One of these things is not like the other. One of these things just doesn't belong. Can you tell which thing is not like the other? Before I finish this song, if he don't belong, if she doesn't belong, if that evil spirit doesn't belong, if that behavior doesn't belong, if that belief system does not belong, if that habit does not belong, it'll be exposed to you. It'll be revealed to you. Rather, it'll be exposed to you. Truth is revealed. Darkness is exposed. Oh, we got to look at this one scripture. Then, then I gotta, we got to pray. Hebrews 12. Hey, what, are you, anything you can take with you? Don't be afraid of opposition. Oh, gee, my God. What, 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 what's a good word for P.O.'d? Because uh, some, some people consider that cussing. I don't want to cuss in a holy place like this. P i s s e d o f f. What, what, what's another phrase for that? Huh? Heated. All right. What gets me heated more than anything else? Give me another one. What gets me ticked? Oh, that's a good one. It gets me ticked off more than anything else. Give me another one. Perturb. What perturbs me more than anything else? Give me another one. Uh huh. Grinds my ear more than anything. Oh, grinds my gears? Oh, like scraping gears when you, oh, yeah, scraping gears. Give me, give me another one. I, I, I want this picture painted. Ir, what irritates or rubs me the wrong way more than anything. I just, what vexes me more than anything. What, what, what sets my teeth on edge more than anything. What, 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 what smells like rotten mango chutney more than anything else? What, what, what is more reminiscent of, of old cabbage more than anything else? You know what it is? It's the enemy. When I am aware that the enemy is trying to make me afraid, it ticks me off. Because it is saying to me he does not respect the faith that I have in Jesus, that he, that, that he would even believe that he could tip me to be afraid. Ah, it irks me to no end. I ain't scared. Man, it makes me mad. I know he's against me, but when you, when you come and you try to make me scared, you are saying you don't respect. You have no respect for what I believe happened on the cross. I'm telling you, I believe what happened on the cross. And what happened after the cross. All right, let's look at this Hebrews. Is this helping you at all? Yes. Wherefore, oh Jesus, we are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. 
Let us lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. See, that's why it bothers me. Jesus is the author and finisher of my faith, and the devil, because see, f- fear is the opposite of faith. And so for the devil to attack me with fear, he's just saying, you, 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 your faith ain't nothing. All right, then I'm going to have to drop 40 on you. You got to have that resilience and be able to come back. Like Joe Gibbs said about Tony Dorsett. Joe Gibbs, the coach of the Redskins. Tony Dorsett, running back for the Cowboys. Our history against Dorsett is you stop him, you stop him, you stop him, and then boom, he's gone for 40 or 50. That's what I want you to be. The devil can stop you, look like he got you, look like he got you. The next thing you know, you done broke loose. 40 or 50, touchdown. So you never let marginal disappointments make you feel you're not winning after all. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. That's where Jesus is sitting. When we're seated with him in heavenly places, that's where that is. uh, Hebrews 4.16 tells us, uh, that, that we can find grace to help in the time of need at this throne. That's heavenly places. That is exactly when it says we're seated with him in heavenly places, that's what it's talking about. So it's not just Jesus and the Holy Ghost going to the throne on your behalf. They are on your behalf, but you're sitting up in there too. And the Lord cannot, de- the Lord God cannot deny you. Now, when he looks at you and sees blood splattered on you, the blood from the cross, he said, yeah, I think I'll do this for you. Yeah, I, I, I believe I'm going to have to get this fixed for you. Last one, last one, last one. John 19, 30. Give, give, give me some uh, sound bites real quick. Oh, Lord Jesus. Goodness. Yes, ma'am. All right, truth is revealed, darkness is exposed. Positive people are revealed to you. They're hidden. They're hidden. People that belong in your life are hidden. But then the Lord reveals them. People who don't belong in your life are hiding. And God has to expose them. This is going to be a great year of revelation and expose. Politics, politicians, and then peers. It's going to be real clear. All right? Yeah, okay, that was good. Yes, ma'am. Last word of everything and everybody and what he says goes. Yvonne. Yvonne. Amen. 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 Here's one. One more here. Joseph was one more here, right here on the second row. That's Talisha. Haywood right there. She said what I said, but I'll do another one. Jesus is wherever I am. Jesus is wherever I am. And like Apostle said. If you, if, if you know Jesus doesn't want to be somewhere, then you don't go there. Because he wants to be with you all the time. See, a lot of times all we got to do is just ask, you know, Lord, what's your privilege? What do you want here? What do you want? And see, that's what you do with weed. That's what you do with the alcohol. Lord, if this, Pastor keep talking about it, maybe, maybe, maybe something's not wrong with Pastor, maybe something's wrong with me. Is this not your will? See, anything in our lives that we're not willing to put on the altar of sacrifice, put it up there. Just say, all right, just, I, I'm going to do it just to find out what you're going to say. 
Is this, is, if you don't, you remember my testimony, you don't want me to go to parties anymore, all right, then you take the desire away. You so big and bad, you, you fix it. Then he took the desire away. And I said, you tricked me. He said, no, I didn't trick you. You asked me. Lord, you don't want me to have this woman? This is not the woman you for me? Take it away. But see, we have confirmation bias. Once we buy in, we don't want, we don't want to put it up for scrutiny. But Jesus has got to have the last word. You got to give him the last word. Even when I told Dr. Trey, the Holy Spirit told me, tell her how you feel. Well, Tracy, we've been hanging out a lot, and we hang around people all the time. You have a good time. Sometimes things develop, and the Lord will be working on stuff. The Lord might be working on something. Here. Well, I don't know. I'm going to have to pray about that. I'm saying to myself, Holy Ghost, I ain't listening to you ever again. You, 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 you got me out here sinking, crashing and burning. But then she came back. She came back, and she said, no, no, I prayed, though. She did pray, and, and the Lord dealt with it. And she said, oh, yeah, 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 we, we got to do this. I said, do what? She said, what you were talking about last July. I said, I, I, I don't remember. I, I, I don't know what that was because I wanted to make sure she had the revelation. Then even after we both agreed, I still put it on the altar. And we got five weddings coming up this year. Y'all going to have to deploy some of these skills I'm giving you. You're sure, but you still got, Lord, talk to me. Am I hearing right? And then fast. Because I go see her every week from Richmond to D.C. I drive up there every, every, every week. And, and, and he said, he said, oh, no, every other week. He said, oh, no. He said, no, 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 you, you, you can take a couple of weeks off. Because, see, the flesh got involved, just want to be around the person. And the Lord saw it was, a, it, was a, it was a, when I say flesh, I don't mean physical. I just mean just, just an emotional thing. And he said, I needed to stay in the spirit. So you're going to take some weeks off. Can you do that? Oh, we're not going to talk this week. You're not married. No, married people are like, oh, glory to God. I was, I was, <laughs> glory to God. Baby, did you get that? That's a word. <laughs> the Lord is talking. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's not for married people. That's, that's for dating people. Can you take a week off? Can you take two weeks off? Let me give you another precursor since this is the year of the groom. Beware of this statement. I just can't live without you. You don't want to be with that person. Because they definitely need to be able to live without you. <laughs> I can live without Tracy. Don't want to. Don't plan to. I can't live without Jesus. Because he has the last word on everything and everybody, and what he says goes. Tracy does not have the last word. Just ask her. She, 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 David is just, he, this, he makes it hard. I want to be with pastor. I want to be with a pastor. Yeah, you, 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 you better think about that one. It's a different world. All right? Um, so, so that's important. All right? It's the year of the groom. Ask the Lord. Okay, let me get these last ones in right here. And we got to come over here. Pastor, I heard you say, whatever I'm dealing with, it is a spirit, and that spirit is subservient to God. Amen. Subservient to God. Subservient to Christ. I just, I just keep getting fired. I get fired it just every 30 days I'm getting fired. Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> kind of bad. I mean, so that's not a, that's not a, a personality quirk. That's a spirit yeah. making that happen. Yeah. I, you know, what? we always have financial problem. I'm not, that's not a financial attack. That's a spirit of poverty if it's always happening. But that spirit is subject to Christ, but you need to put these scriptures on it. Make them deal with this. Deal with this revelation. 
deal, de- become so familiar, not not familiar, so faith-filled with the Word of God that when it comes out of your mouth, the devil himself believes it. Then he'll leave you. Matthew chapter 4 said he left Jesus. Yeah. G- he, Jesus hit him with so much word. He said, I just, I, he believes this. I, I think I believe it too. Let me leave him alone. All right? Uh, but when I dismiss, I need Bill Bailey and LaVon Bailey. I also need John Dooley and Heidi Dooley. And I also need Trocon and Jaquista Freeman. Y'all just come, come see me. You're not coming to the, the principal's office. You're not, you're not getting fussed out. I just have something specific I need to say to you. All right. Yes, right here. Yes, here. In, 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 anywhere. What? Pastor, I heard you say the simplest response brings the most overwhelming result. Yes, it could just be glory. Whew. Praise God. Whew. See? See, that's the kingdom of God is sound activated. And so the spirit is working with you. Ah! See, that, that's, you, 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 but you got to be willing to let that out. You can't be too sophisticated. Woo! This in, in your office, it's a big room of cubicles. They won't know where it came from if you let it out real quick. Woo! They, what, what, who, who was that? They won't even know. I don't want to get embarrassed. They're not going to know who, where it came from. 50 cubicles. Woo! They like... They won't know. <laughs> if you're in your car by yourself, you'll know, but you're the only one in there. All right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Here, here, here. See? See, that's, that, that's hooking up with the Holy Ghost. See, when it, by unction. <laughs> Glory to God. See, I'm, I'm, I'm letting I'm the Holy Spirit's working with me. See, can the Holy Spirit work with you? If all, your whole time with God is just always. He ain't dealing with you. You're going to move. You're going to shake. You're going to flinch something. Ah, glory. Woo! you something. You, your flesh cannot handle all the power that God has and brings to you. So you can just get over just sitting there. Like, oh, well, hallelujah. I'm just, I'm living for the Lord. No, when you're living for the Lord, every, somewhere, something going to come out. Mm. Ha! Glory to God. Glory. <laughs> you laugh, and so you get you 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 have just a common laugh that's just I'm laughing just in general. Then 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 you laugh. See, my, that's that's my potato chip laugh. Sounds like a bag of chips. <laughs> full of joy, man, right now. I'm just so full of joy. We got to go, but I, I'm full of joy. I'm full of joy. I'm just full of joy, man. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Why? Because Jesus has the last word on everything and on everybody. And what he says John 19.30. Turn there. Last one. John 19.30. Oh, my goodness. Hallelujah. We got to go. I got pancakes with the pastor. Uh, we're going to be throwing pancakes uh, with the kids. Um, I'm going to catch me some pancakes. Now, I didn't say I'm going to eat them. I'm going to just catch them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe there's a current, uh, there, 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 there's a recombinant and, and a residual current from the Holy Ghost in this room right now. And if, if you'll touch the shoulder or the elbow or the, or the hand of the person next to you, in the name of Jesus, I, I sense that current moving through this room. I feel, I, I feel it just moving through this room. hitting every life, touching every home, penetrating everybody. Yeah, 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 replacing cells, 
repairing organs. I, 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 I'm seeing organs being repaired. Renewing you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell you what I saw. I saw this for somebody in here. I saw you lying on a table, on an operating table, and I saw an angel reach over. He has to cut you open. Man, man has to cut you open. The angel just put his hand inside you. He put his hand inside, and he took something out, looked to the other angel and said, all right, give it to me now. And, get, and he put the, the new one in his hand, and he just he, he put it right back. He put, put it right back. It was an organ. I said it was an organ. I said it was an organ. Glory to God. Last scripture, John 19, 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. Notice he didn't say, I am finished. It had a T on the end. It is finished. This work the price being paid for our salvation, price paid for our healing and deliverance, price paid for our joy and peace is finished. It's done. So whatever it is of which Jesus has the last word over everything and anybody and what he says goes, it's already finished. And so you make your prayer you give your thanksgiving, you make your confession, your declaration based on it's finished. Stop for a second. Listen to me. What he will do, the enemy, is get you to focus on facts and feelings, symptoms. Because if I am healed, how am I, how am I feeling this in my body? I, it, it, Jesus don't care. Jesus has the last word. If I am blessed financially and I believe that, how am I dealing with this financial mess? I, I understand. I hear you. But that's the devil's job is to get you out away from the now, away from it's finished, away from the throne. God's not trying to figure out how to help you. He's not, we got to research, we, we're working. No, he, no, no, no. It's done. It's finished. That's why he wants you in the throne room. He wants you, Jesus, help me. He wants us hanging out in the throne room more where it's already done. That way, when we step a little bit into the natural, then we're like, I, 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 I can deal with what I'm feeling because I spent so much time at the throne, I, 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 it's finished. And what Jesus says goes. So I just need, I need us to worship and pray and pray, praise more and, and thank, get into thanksgiving more. That will keep us in the now, keep us in the present. And then therefore, when you don't see what you want to see, it's not going to matter. Because in the throne, at the throne, in, in heavenly places, in spiritual gifts and spiritual blessings, it's done. It's done. Anything in your body needs to be done is already done. Anything in your, I'm going to give you the three, boot, the, three, the three B's. Anything in your body, anything in your bank, and anything involving your boo. <laughs> Covered. It is finished. It's finished. So now I'm coming at this thing not from a standpoint of what if. I heard you last week, Grandma. What if this doesn't manifest? What if this is not going to happen? And then the enemy, this joke, he, he is so evil. Well, he's crafty. He can put a picture in your mind of it not working. He'll give you a picture of you up in the hospital room. Get, put a picture in your mind of you in a casket. He's a liar.
So you got you to gotta stay in the now. You got to stay right here and right now. You got it? I had one or two more over here. Let me get these in. Go ahead and just scream, scream them out. I will bless the Lord at all times. That's the secret right there. Glory to God. Glory to God. What's wrong? Oh, my, my leg, my leg's tripping today. But but I, but I'm blessing the Lord though. Woo! Hallelujah. In the midst of pain, in the midst of discomfort, you just let it fly. And squeeze out. Ah! Squeeze one of those out too. See, anointing is being released when you function that way. That's why sinners and other people, unbelieving believers, they'll laugh at it. But you're not going to be laughing when what you're believing for manifests. All right? Yeah, uh, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. We had, okay, that was her. Okay. Who was here? Yes, sir. Pastor, I heard you say I smell angels around me. Yeah, I, I smell. Not because they stink. It's, it's a cologne they're wearing. You know what the cologne is? It's in a bottle. They squirt it on, and you know, and it's the, the label. You know what it says? What Jesus says goes. That's the fragrance. <laughs> Spray some on yourself, too. What Jesus says goes. Spray it in your mist and walk into it. Ah. <sighs> What do you smell? I smell what Jesus says goes. I smell like what Jesus says goes. All right. Give God praise and thanksgiving, man. Let's, let's shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Something glorious is going to happen in your life this week. 